Traders, I'm done for the day, uh, and I would like to make a short recap of my trades today. So uh, let's go quickly through this. Uh, here's how my account looks like. I had uh, two fantastic trades in Beyond, uh, which uh, end result is almost four grand. JD, very nice trade. Uh, a very small loser in Team E, and two trades in Tesla. One losing, one one loser, one winner. Uh, but the end result is down $1,500. My end result for today so far is $3,600. Very, very close to what I had yesterday. So just let's go through a short recap and uh, discuss a bit my trades. Um, we, want, uh, we, we thought about this recently and we want to start doing that every day. And, um, you know, so that it will give you a, an opportunity to, to ask some questions and, um, you know, maybe go through some of the details of the trade. So let's start with Team E because I, I believe that was my first trade. So as you can see here, Team E started with a huge gap down today. And that is just my bread and butter trades. But I did not get it when it came down. That happened uh, too quick and I was a bit busy with other trades. So I came into this trade at this green spike up. When you, when all, when all Whenever you have a green spike up, there's of course two opportunities, two options here. One, it's just a spike and then it will continue coming down. I would say that would be more than 60% of the time. So mostly you don't see what you do see here. But I did know that if I'm going to short it on this spike up, then it's very likely to come down. But I did also know that I'm going to have a very close stop here. And since it moved down dramatically earlier, I had the idea that um, if it's going to fail and move over the highs, which it did, then I'm going to have a very small um, loss, which turned out to be a 15 cent uh, stop loss, which gave me a great risk reward opportunity. So the risk reward compensated for the fact that I took it as it spiked up. So that was the whole idea about TME. Uh, probably more than 50 or 60 percent that is going to come down did not. A very small risk reward which compensates for the fact that I did not take it where I should have taken it, which was here at the second uh, candle. And this trade did not finish the way I was hoping and I had an $850 um, dollar loser. So that was my first trade and then came my second trade. Second trade came in Tesla. Well, I did it right. <laughs> I mean, it was a losing trade, but I did it right because my target was one point. Now, well, I did not take, I, I started by doing it right. I planned it right. I did not do it right. It came down one dollar. I had the opportunity to take my partial. I was a bit greedy. I thought I could do better. It did not. It moved up and moved over the highs. Well, that is mainly to do with what the market did today. Look at this huge spike up at the S&P 500. That's the S&P 500, the SPY. So this huge spike up, of course, helped Tesla to move over the highs and uh, take me out of the game with a $1.20 uh, loss. So um, I was thrown out of the game right over here. Took it uh, here at 2.30 short, had my $1, but got thrown out of the game over the highs here at a $1.20 loser or so. So uh, probably should have taken my partial here and then had my profit cushion in the case it moves up, which I always do. You know? So you see, even if you're wrong, the, the, the whole idea of trading the right way is if you are wrong, you still get your profit cushion here. That's why I have my one-to-one -one risk reward. I do take my target. I think that even if I'm wrong, even if it's going to do what it did eventually, I could still enjoy this pullback from the highs, get my partial, have my profit, lock in my profit, and then if it moves over the highs, then fine, I'm out, but that would still be a profitable trade. I just did not play it according to my rules. That's it. I did play the second trade in Tesla according to my rules, lucky enough, because I did get a move here of more than one dollar, shorted it later under 232, more than one dollar down, it did come down, at this time I did not make the same mistake, I did know that I have a one-to-one -one risk reward and I played it according to my rules, took my profit 
and the risk was stopped when it moved higher. I did not stop it over the highs, I stopped it much before that. So anyway, Tesla was stopped with a very small quantity that I've left from my previous, from that recent short, and the result is down because my loser was bigger than my winner, and my the second time I came in was a smaller quantity because, you know, whenever you're trading a second trade in a stock that you already lost in, uh, then you always suspect, which is <laughs> always a very, a very um, uh, it happens quite a lot that you're taking the second trade just because uh, it's a revenge trade. So, you know, even though you're kind of sure it's not a revenge trade because you really see a good opportunity, many times it is a revenge trade. So, you're not sure about it, lower your own size. It may be a revenge trade, even though you're not totally uh, agree deep down in your mind that it is. It could be lower your size. So a second trade in a stock anyway, it's always with smaller size. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're making money or losing money. In this case, I had a second trade after losing money. It's even more dangerous, much more dangerous than the first trade. It was half my quantity. So end result in Tesla is not as bad as it was because I was down almost three grand, I believe, uh, 250 or something like that. I'm not sure, um, 2500 or so. So it finished a bit better than I had it. So I, I really started with two losers today. With TME and in Tesla, I was probably down like uh, three grand. And then came Beyond. So what happened with Beyond? Let's take a, click, a quick look about uh, uh, what happened with Beyond here. So Beyond was moving up, not much. You know, with Beyond, moving up usually is much more dramatical than what it did over here. So that was not a dramatic move. Plus, the market moved up that much, and the market was holding to the highs when Beyond was here, but Beyond did not hold to the highs, and what was very interesting, the volume in Beyond was relatively small, so really, I saw Beyond when it was here. I didn't watch Beyond. You guys posted it, so I watched it, and therefore, I took a look at Beyond, and it came down from the highs, did not hold to the highs, it still was green, because you see this is yesterday's close here, it still was green, but not the beyond kind of green, of green, you know, it's used to be, when it's green, it's very green, so it was just a bit green, and there was a very, very nice breakdown formation here, under 170, look at this beautiful uh, bear flag formation, Originally, I posted it under 169.60, then I, 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 I changed it to 170, and when it came down, look at the way it came down. I did not get it at 170, though it happened too quick. I got it at 169.30 something, so somewhere around here. I chased it down a bit. I, I knew I could because it is beyond, and it is a big runner. So, um, and, and anyway, it was not with, uh, with, with large size, although you can see the result, the result is amazing, but that is due to the fact that I had two trades in Beyond. So the first one worked out very, very nicely as it came down, and then came the second one, which also was amazing. So took the second one right over here, and look at the way it came down. So that was more like a continuation trade, and Beyond kind of lost it now. I mean, that was very, very cl clear. That was again, due to the fact that Beyond did not hold to the highs with the market, I saw some selling pressure. At the point where I changed it to 170 short, that was the point I also mentioned that you should be watching the level 2, watching the sellers coming in, and it was very, very clear that the sellers are coming down and putting in pressure. There were some buyers at 170 whole numbers, and once it came down, that was amazing. So, two lovely trades in Beyond, well, my result was over almost 4 grand. And um, actually, I think the second trade was JD, not Beyond. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at JD. JD was beautiful. I mean, it was all over uh, when when I opened up my when I started trading today. It was it was one of my candidates. I posted it as one of my candidates, and that was because uh, JD started with a huge gap up. I think I believe it was six percent. Right now, it's up almost uh, uh, almost nine percent. Right here, you can see that. So. Beyond started with a big gap up, uh, sadly, it moved down quite a lot. I was I posted it over the highs when it was somewhere around here. I couldn't go long when it came down to here. Now, of course, I wish I would have done that, and you guys spotted it, and I know some of you came in. I think 
buying, beyond, buying uh, JD over here was extremely dangerous. I saw some of you guys doing that. That was extremely dangerous. I'm very happy you made money in this trade. Very, very happy you made money. But that was a very dangerous trade to take here, traders. Why? Because beyond came down from the highs too much, way too much. If you're thinking about going long here, just try to imagine the next move. The next move should be a pullback to the uh, up a bit. You went long here and then coming down under the lows. That would be the normal way, the normal business. <laughs> I mean, that was the trend. You were going counter trend. Now you had a good reason to do that because the beyond was still up 5 or 6%. So yes, it could return to the highs. Yes, it did return to the highs. Now, of course, when people are watching beyond, then they would love to go over the highs because there's a lot of people who are watching it today, a lot of people are following it. Everybody who's screening for stocks is, 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 has, has, has JD, did I say beyond again? Has JD on his, on, 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 on his uh, uh, screening list. So everybody's watching it. So actually everybody's going to join it. So we joined it over the highs. That was 28.90. Moved up a bit. Came down. Nothing wrong. Nice support here at the view up. Uh, I mentioned in the room several times we should give it some uh, space because it's very, very likely to continue higher, and it did. And look at this beautiful move. We took our partial somewhere along the way. So that was a $2,000 winner for me. And I'm still hiding 100 shares. And that would be the... That would be my trading day. Almost $3,600. Quite the same as yesterday. Nice... Uh, two green days to start my week. We will try to record it every day, so if you guys want to watch it later, you could possibly do that.